Hello and welcome to Movies on the Side. This is Stephen Robles. And this is Nate Baranowski. And today we are discussing, I don't want to, no spoilers, but one of my favorite Disney movies, Big Hero 6 from 2014. I cannot wait to talk about it. Nate, I feel like whenever I've mentioned this movie in the past, you've always mm-hmm. been kind of like, mm, yeah, I, don't, I couldn't get a read on how you felt about this movie. Right. I think for the most part, <laughs> right. I saw it before and basically said, mm-hmm. I remember it being good. Okay. But I'm not committed to rewatching it again because I would need to rewatch it because I, you know, somewhat didn't remember most of it. And then mm-hmm. I did a chalk piece for Disney that was Big Hero 6 themed that was beloved by people because people love this movie. And people I watched the movie in preparation for it. Yes. And I guess yes. we're going to put all of our cards out on the table. Put them I all out. I loved it too. Yes! Yes! I'm so happy, Nate, because well, we're going to talk about it. First of all, real quick, Rotten Tomatoes. I will say the audience and critic score are very, very close. So if you guess one number and hit either one, I'll give it to you. What do you think this got Rotten Tomatoes? 86. It's close. Critics gave it a 90. Audience gave it 91. Mm-hmm. 90, mm-hmm. 91 split. It's a good movie. I don't know what it is about. It. So the 2014, I already it didn't had make two a children ton of. Time. It didn't make no. a ton of noise, right? It didn't make a ton of noise. This is not, not Frozen. Not bigger movies. It was not Frozen. When did Frozen come out? Now that you said that, twenty twelve maybe was the first one. Frozen release. Frozen came out twenty thirteen. See, this was the issue. Oh, it was. It was in the 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 aftershock this... of Frozen. We were all still singing <laughs> "Let It Go." Everyone was still singing Let It Go. There's no music in this one. It came out for streaming or rental probably around the time this movie came out. Like, Frozen was too big. It was Mm. too big. And I think Big Hero 6 got snubbed. What came right after Big Hero 6? You you got it pulled up? Disney animated movies. See, Big Hero 6 was 2014. Zootopia Mm -hmm. was 2016. And then Moana was Mm. also 2016. And then Ralph Breaks the Internet. So, I mean... Yeah, Zootopia was fine. You know, yeah, it was good. You, you, it was, you know, but I do feel like this kind of, oh, but let me actually look up Pixar around that time, too. You think because, we had, like, another Toy Story around I'm trying, there? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. Pixar feature films. This is some live this Googling. This is live. Look at, look at how, live, live look how Googling focused Steven looks. If you're watching video. it on YouTube, look at his face. I don't mess around, Nate. I don't mess around. Listen, 20. Hugh Jackman and Swordfish. 14. The hacking. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Hugh Jackman was in Swordfish? Yeah. I never saw that movie. He was the hacker. Thing. Really? I don't know. I feel like Hugh Jackman... He didn't, know, he, like he didn't come across as a... As a as good a, hacker, yeah. That's okay, a good hacker. Good. But also, they didn't no, do hacking, right? So Zero Pixar movies in 2014. Okay. Monsters University was 2013. Eh. Inside Out was 2015. Ooh. I a good design of this. So, 2014. So I, think, I think Frozen and Inside Out it's Frozen. Book bookended it. Right, and it got over this one. It got snubbed. Yeah. I don't. I feel like it's been so long now. What is it? It's almost ten years since this movie came out. I rewatched uh, most of it. I still do my math to twenty twenty. You know, like I still like I think <laughs> of twenty twenty as like oh about six years ago. I was like oh twenty twenty three. We're in twenty twenty three. Twenty twenty three. It's not. This movie's nine years old. I already had two kids at the time, mm-hmm. and so I watched this as like an adult adult, and my kids were young enough. When it came out, like we watched it multiple times when it came out at mm-hmm. home, you know, and I really loved it then. I hadn't seen it for a while, and so in preparation for this, I wanted to watch a few scenes, make sure it's mm-hmm. still on TikTok. In my mind. Call back to our bonus it. episode. Please <laughs> listen to our bonus episode, Stephen. How do they get it? Patreon.com slash movies on the side or directly in Apple Podcasts. You can subscribe there and you get a bonus episode every time there's a movie review. Just saying. We talked about Stephen, Stephen watching a. 24 minutes of the best parts of a movie, not knowing the name of the movie, but watching it on TikTok. He's become the monster. And we talk about the uh, Senate hearing about TikTok, which was, I think it was a pretty good segment. But anyway, that's the bonus episode. So I watched this movie multiple times. I watched clips again just today in preparation, and this movie holds up. It is still one of my favorites. I feel like this movie deals with so many themes. It has loss and grief on multiple angles. It has the friendship between Hero and Baymax. And I feel like in the nine years since this movie came out, Baymax has become like a cultural, like, uh, character. 
I feel like when there's been certain cell phones that come out, and when there's like a dot for the camera, people will make Baymax wallpapers so one of the dots is his eye. Mm. You know what I mean? Like stuff like that. And uh, like I saw a, a recent picture of like a fashion thing, and it was a big white, like puffy jacket. And somebody said it's the Baymax jacket. Like I feel like it it has weaved itself quietly into like the cultural mind. And uh, I love that because I think this movie is great. And so I'm glad you enjoyed it the second time around. I wonder. Yes. Here's, let me tell you something from my on boots on the ground research mm-hmm. from this movie, which was. Boots on the ground, movies on the side. Which was it. chalking on the ground while people mm-hmm. talked about this movie. Oh, you heard That's that. That's my research. I like that. Let me tell I you. I like that. What percentage yeah. of people do you think said Betamax instead of Baymax? Everyone over 40 said Betamax. Yeah, it was about 70%. <laughs> it was about 70% of people ah, said that's a Betamax. Shame. Everyone so, 30 and under said Baymax, though. I'm sure. I, I don't know. I, uh, I I don't know if it broke down by No one age. under 30 would know what Betamax is. We can talk later about what the pronunciation... Yeah, exactly. The, what the pronunciation in. of stay. Encanto was I among people. <laughs> oh, no, let's not talk about that. But listen, I, here's what I think is unique about this as a Disney animated movie. Yes. One, I feel like the action in this movie is some of the best in a Disney movie. You know, you typically don't watch a Disney movie for action per se, like fighting scenes or whatever. But just looking back at the few, actually there are several action scenes in this movie. There's Mm -hmm. a lot of them. But I feel like they're actually really good. And paired that with the soundtrack of this movie, I feel like the music is actually really good too. And those together, like... This is just a fun movie to watch, and I think it does action better than most Disney movies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would say the action is great in it. The This mm-hmm. movie... Oh, we're not doing spoilers, right? It's nine years old? We do the, or are we, we doing a spoiler? No, no, no spoiler horn. We'll, we'll say things, and we'll spoil the ending if you have not seen this nine-year-old movie, but it's fine. Okay. Go ahead. So I guess gentle spoilers for the first bit, but... <laughs> so Hero is his parents died so he's being raised he's, by his aunt yes. correct right yep with his brother older brother tadashi yeah and his older brother is so is removed dies like not that long into the movie no and, no but their relationship is established i feel okay, like yeah yeah tadashi enough, has the older enough brother enough to and, really care about their relationship yeah that concept of you lost your parents and now you lost your brother is so crushing i guess it's heavy to like it's heavy. so heavy it's yeah i'm not sure if i've seen a more heavy like there is a lot there are there are a lot of disney movies where like the person starts as an orphan or they lost a parent it's everywhere right, right. kind of throughout it's sets lots up a of lot dads, of the conflict there's a lot of dads of, being lost right you know. there's a, like the the frozen elsa and anna like their parents are gone like there's a lot of Lion that King. <laughs> <laughs> famously i'm just saying right. i'm just saying like right the like, big ones so that's kind of normal to us it sets up a, a bunch of conflict the character has right. sadness and wounds inside that like kind of helps propel them on their hero's journey or whatever yeah this yeah is maybe the the most sad that I felt like I've ever seen a main Disney character, like their position in life, other than right. maybe Cinderella, who is <laughs> full on traumatized by the one remaining family member that was married into her dad. Like other than that, yeah. she has to Woody, resort to mice. Woody is, Woody is pretty distraught in Toy Story 1 with the introduction of Buzz, but that's not sad. He was kind of like... He actually has, like, good friends around him. Yeah, that's true. That's true. For a while, Hero has, like, no support system. Oh, no. He has his aunt, who his aunt is great. Yeah. Like, her character is great throughout. But anyway, what a deep, deep place to put a main character in an animated movie. It's It's a rough place, but I think that then opens the door to this incredible friendship, which, again, is a... A thing in Disney movies, the friendships, the relationships between the main character, whoever else, like Hero and Baymax, a relationship to a robot. And 
let's just talk about Baymax because it is incredible how much emotion and like emotive lines he can mm-hmm. speak with like zero facial expressions. Like the challenge of the Baymax character in this movie is that the face barely moves. Like he blinks, right. but that's it. Like there's a right. line connecting the eyes that doesn't move. There's not eyebrows to communicate any kind of emotion. And this was voiced by Scott Adsit. And I just think between his voice acting and the script and the way the story sets up these scenes, it is amazing how much emotion Baymax can construe and portray and make you feel as the viewer. And it's just amazing. Is there a beeping going on? What is beeping? A truck outside is backing up into a driveway. (laughs) Yeah, one way. of my best points in this episode, and there's you know just beeping. That's cool. I, well, you know, that's you can mute my track while you say your cool. <laughs> no, track. no, no, no. But now you but called anyway, it I out, just, so now we're here. Yeah, I mean, we're here. Let's say there's a you know video side. There's no editing. So anyway, I just feel like it's an incredible character. I think semi unique in Disney's like movie uh, chronology or whatever to have this robot with so much emotion, simple lines, you know what I mean? But so meaningful. And so again, Mm. I think that's to the writing, to the voice acting and the whimsy, like the fist bump is one of the famous parts of this movie where when they make the bottle, la 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 la, which apparently in the voice recording room, uh, adds, it just did like a bunch of sounds because they weren't sure what they were going to go with for Baymax Mm -hmm. representing the fist bump. And they said whenever they tested that sound in theaters, like with a theater of people before the movie launched, whenever he said ba da la da la everybody erupted in laughter. <laughs> and so they knew that that would be the sound. Good, Initially, good use of thought, focus groups. Yeah, it was 100% focus group because when they first heard him record it, they were like, no, we're never going to use that. But once people heard it, it was clear mm. the clear winner, uh, the sound that, that would come out. And so I just, yeah, I, I love Baymax. I love how he can communicate so much emotion. And we'll get to the end later but the way her, the way he cares for hero mm-hmm. and it's like i don't know how how deep we want to get right away but it's like yeah let's go for he's it still a, he's still a robot mm-hmm. but because he's programmed to care for someone else both physically and emotionally and they do kind of like represent the emotions as mm-hmm. like neuro connections some as something baymax can read when being since his ultimate goal is just to care for the well-being of hero i don't know it just becomes really like an emotional thing like to say oh this is what it's selfless true care selfless care of another person would look like and even if it's by a robot like it's really meaningful with With self-sacrifice built into it even if it's just like all in the program but i think they add an extra level to Baymax because Tadashi programmed him because Hiro's brother is the one who made him. So there's also this element of like the fingerprints of my brother are on this robot as well. Which you could even say like someone who builds apps today or like the people who create iOS for the iPhone, even their programming in code as it's represented in animations on the iPhone mm-hmm. or whatever, like their fingerprints are on the devices that they make. And so, yeah, to your point, while it's seemingly a cold robot, it was programmed by a human being. And so I think it's a good, and I, I love the moment. One of my favorite moments. I cry three times. Well, I cry four times in this movie. Can you wow, name the four okay. times? Can you name the four times? Okay. So Tadashi dies in the fire. Yeah, I probably cry at that point. I think that's one I was definitely thinking. But yeah, okay. The other three. Uh Baymax sacrifices himself. Yep, definitely at that point. Um There's two other key moments. I cry every time. Uh, Nate is thinking. Oh Nate is when thinking. when when Hero tries to kill a man and then realizes yes. that yeah, it was bad. <laughs> Yes, and I, I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna tell you why that that was I was wondering if you were gonna guess that one and you nailed it. And then there's one other one. It's not a sad moment in particular, but for some reason I cry every time. Is it sitting up on the San Francisco Bridge, or like discussing something with Baymax? And I don't know. You are very close. I'm gonna say that you got it. It's the flight scene when the they flight. end sitting on that balloon. Yeah, which yeah. I think is what you were thinking of. Yeah, uh, they're on yeah. top of the bridge. You're right; they're on the balloon. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm impressed, Nate. Uh, I feel uh, I feel known. That's very nice. I need okay, but, okay. Yeah, go ahead. You well, cried four I times. I only want to talk about the one scene 
uh, where so they they finally found Doctor Callahan is the villain. Great villain, great reveal. First time watching this movie, I'd never you know you don't expect it. But once Hero realizes it's Callahan, inside Baymax, he has two chips. There's, like, the green computer chip that his brother Tadashi programmed, which is, like, the healthcare health mm-hmm. provider chip. And then there's the red chip that Hero made for fighting and destruction. You know what I mean? Right. That's basically what it is. And both of those chips are in Baymax in, during this fight scene. And then once Hero realizes Callahan is the bad guy, Hero removes the green ship from Baymax, and Baymax goes all destroy on Callahan, which I think that scene is one of the most masterfully created scenes. Like, there's a moment where you just see Baymax's, like, red eyes in the darkness in the in the warehouse, like, super effective. And, like, everyone's trying to stop him. You actually stop hearing the sound effects and what's going on, and you just hear the music. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so deep. It's very but good. But it's, it's so good because it's a metaphor of what happens when you remove any amount of caring from a person, from a thing. Mm-hmm. And you only, like, if it's just raw grief and revenge, like, it is basically evil. You know, in that scene, you see Baymax as evil, red eyes, like, trying to kill this person. And you have to grapple with that even in this realization moment when this bad guy let his brother die. And you would think on one level has every reason to be, like, destroy this person. If you remove all care, like, it's not good. Like, you still have to have both of those things. Like, yeah. And I don't know. I just love the visual representation of, like, the green and red cards and seeing it play out in that scene. It's just one of my favorite scenes ever. Yeah, it's honest. very good. It's it's also a, like a good picture of when you're trying so hard to do something to solve your grief. Or you're trying to do something to, like, this will fix it. This will make me feel right. better. And, like, his... Finding right. Callahan and fighting him became the all-consuming thing, but then after a while, it's like, oh wait, like this isn't going to bring your brother back. This isn't going right. to solve anything. This is just. And then he can share that realization with Callahan in the final fight scene, as we come to realize that Callahan lost his daughter in this experiment. Hero can then tell him. Go okay, Let, this is okay, but we're, we're on a big hero six gush over at fest but i need to put a <laughs> splash a little bit of cold water on it i actually uh-huh, somewhat okay. disagree although i love james cromwell's voice in everything he does and in babe and uh what's the will smith That's movie some pig i robot oh yeah, 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 yeah love him in that too but i do think that i find the callahan character hard to believe his motivation in this he goes from like mentor tech mentor doing this to right. we find out later uh alistair alistair how do you the pronounce company it? owner alistair yeah. cree yeah yeah alan but voiced by alan tudyk who in the yes. <laughs> just is doing a voice and not a chicken which is good i mean <laughs> that's range it's like when you yeah. see seeing alan tudyk do a normal dude's voice is like watching um, who's the guy who did Smeagol? It's like watching oh, him do uh, like. I, I it just let, I mean, if you would have not said who's that guy's name, I would have been able to tell you. Andy but Circus. Now, boys, it's like watching Andy, Andy Circus. Circus do just like a regular guy. Of like, remember he was in uh, Prestige, and he was just like the assistant guy, yeah, and you're true. like, you're not. Smeagol or a monkey or some other sort of mocap monster. You're just a regular dude. Alan Tudyk doing a great, just jerk CEO. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I digress good. and I'm, now I'm back. The <laughs> Him going from that to you find out that Alistair Cree, Cree like yeah. did some quasi dangerous things and his daughter got sucked Abigail into. Abigail got sucked into the portal. The, with, to another dimension. It's kind of loosey-goosey. I'm not a huge fan of all of that, exactly. I don't think it sure. needed the big Avengers-style portal in it. Um, Made but, for a good fight scene at the end, though. Sure, sure. But going from that to, I am now going to kill a bunch of college kids that are out. <laughs> to like, 
He doesn't yeah. like fight them off in like a just get out of my way. He's like mm. like the yeah. way they fight. He's sending those like nanobots to destroy them like entirely. And it's like, wait a minute. You yeah, know that yeah. this is hero. Like he's not disguised as some like Spider-Man or whatever. He's the, right, right. the brother of the guy that you worked with for a long time. And I just, just not sure that the whole Cal, either Callahan is really, really, really bad. Or he's just like a morning dad who is like after <laughs> Alistair Cree, yeah. but like not trying to kill anybody. And I feel like they try to have it both ways. And it's like, <sighs> yeah, I don't I, know. I, I don't quite buy it. I could see that. I mean, they did make him like a, not scary villain, but he was like a serious villain. Like the several action scenes, it was, you know, pretty intense with right. him. You know, the danger anyway, it seemed like real danger. So uh, I, I can see that. I can see that. Let's talk about the Motley crew of fighters. <laughs> the, the big hero, Six. The Six. Can I tell you, I did not know that Damon Wayans was the voice of Wasabi until oh, today. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I, I no knew it idea. before I looked it up. I said, oh, okay. Yep, I know this voice. I had no idea. You got Wasabi. You I got did know T.J. Miller. I also knew T.J. Miller. Miller. Like, that's a very really yeah. recognizable voice as well as Fred. Fre- Fred, which I kind of like Fred. You know, I, I feel too. like some, some sometimes the dumb characters can be like annoying. I like Fred in this movie. There I think is the perfect thing. amount of Fred in this movie. Like they're not leaning yeah. into it too hard, but he's just right, right, right. the right amount of goofy. Because I feel like they they give him an innocence along with the goofiness mm-hmm. and like he's actually helpful at some points and like I love the way he wields the sign in the last fight scene when he, and then yep. he's like, no, yep. my signs are on fire. And, you know, he's, you know, it's fun. Like, he, it's, yeah. I think he's a fun character. So he's good. You got Gogo, who's on the skates. She's cool. I don't know if she gets a lot of, you know, like. She doesn't get a lot. I cool. think she's kind of like down the middle. Like Yeah, she's a straight shooter. She's, you know, cool. No, cool. It's all business. Like, yeah. It's all business. Where, and like, you got, she's kind of like, you have to have someone who's, like, serious. So that when they're surrounded by, like, the goofballs. True. Right, you can't right. have everyone be Peter Quill. No. You have to have some people. You have to have Groots, and you have to have the you others. You have a Gamora. Gamora. You have she's Gamora. A she's a serious yep. one. Yeah. Exactly. You got Honey Lemon, played by Genesis Rodriguez, voiced by her. I like Honey Lemon. I do, too. She's a cool character. Yeah. I don't quite understand all those balls she throws. Are they sticky? Are they... What do they do? I mean, like, they, like, explode into, like, bubble gum? She got I mean, different kinds. Some okay. are sticky. Some get hard. You know, she uses them as like a shield. I don't know. You know, yeah. you don't think about it that That's much. A, yeah, I mean, don't think about it. You know, don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then uh, you got Hero. That's the same, right? Hero, Fred, Gogo, Wasabi, Honey Lemon. Yeah. Wasabi has those laser, those laser things, which I feel I like, like laser man, things. If I had big old laser things connected to my arms and I was fighting, I would lose a leg so oh, yeah. fast. <laughs> So there's fast. A, there's a moment when he's first learning to use it. High, like high five. five. Yeah, yeah, he goes yeah. to high five hero. It's like, eh. So I think, you know, they, they played into that. And then all, it's all fun and games. Six. Yes. Yeah. I think I think it's a good crew. I think they have a nice mix of personalities. And I think they have good chemistry when they're all like having dialogue. They made a, a recently a Baymax TV show on Disney Plus. Did you peek at it? Or is that coming out soon? It's called Baymax. I, it's just called Baymax. They leaned into the fact that everyone... Uh, no, doesn't see? know what this name is, so they just said, "Let's make it the title." I didn't. I don't want to. You don't want it. Soil the picture of Big Hero Six in my mind. Would you watch a Big Hero Seven? Yes, I would watch another movie. But you don't want a TV show. I don't want a TV. You don't show. trust I Disney don't Plus. Need... I understand. Well, I mean, some of those Disney Plus shows, you know, they're it's debatable. It's debatable. Uh, so, which you have to watch Andor because Andy Circus. Have you seen it yet? No, nope, not yet. No spoilers. No spoilers. You just need to see it. There's an episode with Andy Circus, and it's really good. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Wonderful. And he's not Gollum. He's not Gollum in this. In this, episode, believe it or not. So, just saying. Does he have a claw hand? No. Nor he's a normal oh. human being. All of his appendages. Human being. Okay. All his appendages. I'm just saying. Uh, let's talk about the flight scene just for a moment. Okay. I was looking for, I thought I read this somewhere or maybe I heard it on a podcast, but for Disney flight 
is kind of like representative of certain things. Like freedom. There's, you got freedom. It's Liberty, like catharsis. Justice. For all, yeah. No, but like, what are you looking around for? Is something flying around your head? No, I'm, I'm just picturing flight. I'm looking <laughs> over San Francisco flight. right now. Which, by the way, San Francisco, the place, right, the theme right. is coming to Disneyland, to Calif- California Adventure. They're turning Pacific oh. Wharf into San Francisco, which will be a fun theming element. I love the, the different elements between it. That's cool. So anyway, flying scene. Carry on. I just think, again, like flying is important in Disney movies. You think back to Peter Pan. You think Aladdin and the Magic Carpet. Like it's always mm-hmm. a very poignant, deep moment. Mm, yeah. And I think, why are you making all these sound effects? What, 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 what is that? I just think this is one of the one of the best flight scenes. I think this is a great, like, it builds. You know, Baymax struggles to fly at first. And then, you know, he gets better at it and just the music swelling behind it. I just think it's one of the best flight scenes. That's all I want all right. to say All right. Well, hold on a second, Hot Shot. Let me give you... What? What? If, I guess if you're going to give me antagonistic energy, I'll give you some... What? How did you... Back. Here we go. Listen. I didn't know what you were there. Yeah. You tell me what's a better flight scene. Are you ready? Oh, better flight scene. Okay. Bigger, better flight scene in bracket form. Top Big Gun Hero Maverick. 6 flying or... Woody and Buzz in the original Toy Story. You can't, you can't go all the way back the there. No, I, I can, and I did. That's no Pixar. Rules that was just Pixar right. before Disney bought it. That's not even a Disney movie. Tell me, what's more triumphant? <sighs> mm. It's falling with style. It's mm. not falling. <laughs> Yana. It's falling with style. Yana. Rest Listen. my case. I will say Big Hero Six is a better <laughs> it's a better flight scene, but Toy Story has a bigger payoff in that moment. So like visually, music, Big Hero Six is a better flight scene. I will scene. say the Aladdin flight scene is better than Big Hero Six flight scene. You, you mean have when he's both escaping the, the escape cave? Well, you have both the escape from the cave and you have a sure. whole new world. Yeah, it does not count as a flight scene. Those are both, you're flying on a magic yeah, carpet. Yana, Yana, objection. There is a song, a duet being sung. Mm-hmm. And if there's, if there's a anyone, hole in the donut. <laughs> listen, anyone, you ask anybody. Anyone can step on a magic carpet. It requires no skill. They're going to say that that scene is about the song not about the flight. I don't I also count that submit as a to scene. you the Golden Eagle from Rescuers Down Under as a, a more impactful flight. Man, I'm, I'm, right. I'm on fire today. Let me, let me. Hold it's on all right. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. I mean, I don't know. I, I still think Big Hero Six is a better flight. In Coco, the dog transforms into a <laughs> giant, colorful creature. No, actually, that's not, that's not that impactful. The glass onion. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know. I just I love that flight scene. It's, yeah, it's really um, cool. I was a bit spoiled about, okay. by it because I spent a lot of that scene scrubbing through to try to find a usable reference for my art. So I actually saw that scene oh. about 18 times in a row trying to freeze it at a correct spot in it. Uh, I see. I see. So it's sorry. It's been hurt a little bit. It's really great. Okay, okay. We got to get to the ending. The ending is just crushing moment. Mm. Self-sacrifice to the mm. max. Mm-hmm. Pun intended. To the bay max. Yes. I didn't know. I wasn't going to say it. Uh, you said it. Pun but said. That is a, I think that is, of all the self-sacrifices, I'm not going to say that's the best because I can't think of all the scenes that Right, because I'm about to it. call about Iron Lion Man doing King. the exact same thing in the same portal. Yep. You got that. You got Lion King. You know. Mufasa jumping in to save Simba during the stampede. Not a sacrifice. He already saved him. It, it, no, he Did already he die? Saved. No. <laughs> Did he die? That wasn't a sacrifice. He was murdered by Nate. Scar. He didn't know he was going to okay. survive that. Hold on. Everyone stop. Now, wait a minute. Stop now, hold right on now. a second. You stop right now. Wait a minute. <laughs> that was <laughs> a sacrifice scene. He this did not sacrifice him. Biggest... Mufasa did not sacrifice himself. He didn't <sighs> get trampled by wildebeest while holding up But that's like saying Simba. because Bayman, that's like saying because Baymix didn't know he would have to stay in that dimension that that's not self-sacrifice either. Like Baymax, Baymax didn't know, Baymax he, didn't know knew he wasn't bed. going to make it. 
So he chose not when he entered the portal. Himself. Baymax entering that portal was like Mufasa jumping into the Mufasa, stampede to save Simba. Mufasa never had a thought in his mind that he wasn't going to make it out of. He wasn't going to rescue his son and make it out alive. In fact, he rescued his son. He then climbed yeah. up the cliff. He was doing it, and then he was know, murdered by he Scar. It's not a sacrifice was, if you're murdered. He was yelling at Scar to help him because he was already sliding down. He Scar, might not have made it all the way up, brother. <laughs> You might not have made it all the way up the cliff. Long I hold live listeners. the king. It's one of the Jeremy Irons. Man, Everyone, right now, you head to our Instagram, Movies, on, movies the on the Side. Yes. Listen yes. to me. I need you to tell Stephen right now, Mufasa I need you to did tell not the sacrifice truth. himself. Tell the truth. He was tragically murdered by the uncle character in this Hamlet retelling with lions. <laughs> not a sacrifice. Baymax a is a sacrifice. Lion King Baseball? is Hamlet. The show's over. The show's over. <sighs> Is that like a known thing? Do people know yeah. that? Known thing. Oh, my goodness. Hold on a second. Uh, Steven's doing some, <laughs> some yeah, thinking. This, we definitely got to go. Listen, Mufasa's scene was a sacrifice. That's all I'm saying. So's was Baymax. <laughs> Listeners will decide when they comment on our Instagram, was Mufasa's act a sacrifice? And right. We can, well, we was it? Was well, yeah? Episode. Was Mufasa's act a sacrifice? Yeah. That is Get a perfect Instagram. question. I don't care about this movie anymore. I only care about this <laughs> question. We got to rate this movie real quick on a scale of zero to five. Uh, what are those uh, little car little chips? What do you, what do we say? Scale the, zero the, to the, five. The, the, the oh, oh, and I have to say, one of the coolest like sound editing moments was when Baymax gets a hole poked in himself and he's putting the tape on his holes yes. and the sound gets higher and higher pitched. So good. Just want to mention that. Baymax having the holes and then putting the, like kind of just seeping out had the yeah. same sort of beautiful, um, I don't comical, but like perfectly timed humor as I will say as a props for Zootopia. Two years later, uh, the sure. sloth at the DMV that whole scene good. has that that same sort of like this is good fun. Yeah, well done. That is, that is good. Oh, on a scale of zero to five microbots, okay. zero to five microbots. I, I mm -hmm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna say this is a five <laughs> out of five movie. I wow. I know you brought up some issues with Callahan, but I don't have those issues. This is re high rewatchability. Mm. Music, action, dialogue, emotion, writing. Mm. I think this is an excellent movie. I give it five out of five microbots. Wow. Have you ever done this before? Did you give a five out of five, five, five before? Five. Maybe to San Andreas with a rock, but that doesn't matter much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give Big Hero Six a four out of five, which is super high praise. I'm gonna yeah. say the portal, the Callahan in general, that sort of I don't know. It doesn't do anything for me. It's I get not it, a I get negative, it. maybe it's just not a positive. He's very menacing in his mask, doing his thing, and but the reveal didn't hit me with any sort of, I don't know, right. any sort That's of something. Fine. So four out of five, still great, still okay. recommended, super underrated movie. If you haven't yes. seen Big Hero 6, go worth see it. it. Worth it to go, go see. see. It. It's on Disney Plus. And then go see Lion streaming. King with the new knowledge that it's Hamlet. <laughs> And then, before you go see The Lion King... Oh, it's King, not Hamlet, is it? Oh, my goodness. Did I mess this up? Did you get it wrong? Is it uh, Othello or something? Is it Macbeth? Is it... It's Macbeth. King Lear? It's Macbeth. It's Macbeth? It's Macbeth. Oh. What, did I, what I was saying the whole time. <laughs> to be or not to be. That's what Mufasa oh, no, no. asked himself when Wait. he jumped down into the... <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Scar had the line. To be or not to be. No, no just kidding. Hamlet. Hamlet. It is Hamlet? Okay. It is Hamlet. But it Go is... Go to... Listen. It was listeners. inspired by Hamlet, but also Viewers. by the stories of Joseph and Moses. Okay. All right. That's Go to <laughs> Instagram.com slash Movies on the Side or in your Instagram app at Movies on the Side. We have a post that goes up that says Movie Review where we announce the new episode. Comment on that post. Was we don't Mufasa... often ask you to go to Instagram, but please... I'm pretty sure we ask Do him every this week. For us. But well, I don't. <laughs> I'm asking you this time. The other times oh, that was just I see Steven. How it is. This is both yeah. of us. 
Now, wait a minute. Okay, so go to Instagram <laughs> comment. Was Mufasa and the Stampede a sacrifice? Say yes, and then period, and then Nate was wrong, and then just hit post. Post the comment. That's all you got to do. Or That's speak it. the truth. And then uh, support us so you can listen to the bonus episode at Directly on Apple Podcast or Patreon.com slash Movies on the Side. And as we always say, to be or not to be. Tadashi is here. See, even that like emotionless line, it ah, gets you right there. It is, it is great. It is a great story. Five out of five.